the classic works that we all know on American poverty, to Jacob Reese's How the Other Half Lives and Michael Harrington's The Other America and Barbara Ehrenreich's Nickel, is Nickel and Dimed, the last two of which won Hillman Prizes, and to great academic works like the work of William Julius Wilson. We now add another landmark in this uh, all too small category, the recipient of this year's Hillman Prize for Books, Matthew Desmond's Evicted. In 2008, Matt, who was then a doctoral student at the University of Wisconsin, moved into a trailer park on Milwaukee's south side, and not just any trailer park, but one that the city, which otherwise was largely indifferent to trailer parks, was trying to close because this one was a complete disaster with violations of every kind going on every day. And after spending nearly half a year there, Matt then moved to uh, Milwaukee's north side, to the poorest part of the African-American community's uh, residences in Milwaukee, staying there for uh, another year. What Matt was doing was studying something that he was surprised to find had really not been studied before, evictions. There were no books on evictions. There were few, if any, sociological studies. There was no government data. Uh, it was as if this was just a form of poverty and uh, not really worthy of, uh, of much notice. Not much in, in, in novels either. I mean, there's the first part of the Grapes of Wrath where you will recall the Joads are thrown off their farm. Uh, but it, it's been kind of a, a neglected part of what it means to be poor, but it's actually central in many ways to what it means in America to be poor. Living where he did and spending his entirety of his time with the people who lived in those places, Matt was embedded for 18 months and he made really two discoveries. First, that evictions are not simply a consequence of poverty and of instability, but a major cause of poverty and instability. And second, as incomes over the last 40 years or so for all but the affluent have stagnated or declined, but as property values and rents have not, they've continued to basically go up, that evictions, which were once since the 19, once the 1930s were over, relatively not a major part of uh, the American landscape had become a major part, had become legion, had become a plague. Uh, and Matt began to uh, collect statistics, finding that in a given year in Cleveland, one out of nine people living in a rental house were evicted, one out of 14 in Chicago, and that this was only the ones that went through a legal process, that more were unreported in just in which the tenants were essentially thrown out and no legal proceeding took place. This is in a time when the entire nation is becoming aware of the crisis of the lack of affordable housing, something that is not a problem limited to the poor, though evictions are. Uh, that one-fifth of uh, the renters in the United States pay 50% or more of their income every month for rent. People who wonder why the economy isn't really bubbling along may contemplate that and, and think about all the money they're not able to spend on anything else. But in the world that Matt Desmond lived in, it's not 50%. Sometimes it's 80%, 85%, 120%. And what that means is that uh, the gas is turned off, uh, there's no food in the fridge, uh, the hot water uh, isn't working, the plumbing isn't working. That's the world of the very poor. I don't mean to suggest that this is a statistical study. It's anything but. It's a work of both brilliant ethnography and a work of literature because it's put together so brilliantly. When Matt finished, he had 5,000 pages of transcripted tapes dealing with the lives of, of eight families. And we read about them, and we get to know them, and uh, we're with them as they argue, and as they laugh, and as they cry, and above all, as they worry, as they desperately try to find new places to live and are turned down because they have kids, because they've been evicted, because uh, they don't have the money, and, and so forth. We come to know them. We even come to know the slumlords and the bureaucrats that they have to deal with. It's really the entire world of, uh, of evictions. And it was not an easy story, as Matt says in the afterword, by any means an easy story to report. 
The work was heartbreaking, he writes, and left me depressed for years. But Matt returned from this largely undiscovered country with a poignant, terrible tale and then told it beautifully and compellingly. And unlike most books that outline a problem, it actually has a real world solution suggestion at the end, which is the extension of Section 8 housing vouchers uh, to the rental households of all those who make 30% or less of uh, median income, uh, which for those of us, and there are many who are concerned about homelessness, would be a very concrete solution and not that expensive, it turns out, uh, to crises of homelessness and other crises uh, affecting, uh, affecting the poor. It's also something, though, that this is, Section 8 exists on the federal level, might be done at a state level, too. I think it's pretty clear it's not going to be done at the federal level unless we all can evict the current occupants of 1600 <laughs> Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> Which at some point we will do. Now, Matt is very disappointed that he can't be here tonight. At this very moment, he's in Houston giving a speech that was planned a long time ago then that he couldn't get out of. But he did send us a video, and so let's look at this video now from the recipient of the Hillman Prize for Books for, 19, for 2017, Matt Desmond. It's a deep honor to accept the Hillman Prize for Book Journalism this year, especially because this is a foundation that has long supported work that matters, journalism and social science targeted at the most morally urgent problems of our time. I want to thank the judges. Uh, just having my work reviewed and read by this incredible group of thinkers and writers would have been enough for me. I'd like to congratulate all the other award winners, heroes all in my eyes. I'd like to begin by thanking my family who believe in this work and supported it. Thanks to the MacArthur Foundation, Ford National Science Foundations who also supported the research that went into Evicted. My exacting agent, Jill Neerum, put a lot of hours into this book. At Crown, my editor, Amanda Cook, fell in love with the people and evicted and made sure we told their stories with soul and heart. Molly Stern, my publisher, took a risk on a poverty book and did it right. Penny Simon hustled all around the country to make sure we got the word out. And Ansley Rossner, who's here with you tonight, is now in charge of making sure the paperback has its due. I'd like to thank um, all the people I met in Milwaukee, my greatest teachers, Arlene and Lamar and Scott and Lorraine, and the folks that invited me into their lives and into their homes. The victim tries to tell their story, and in so doing so, it is a narrative about the human wreckage caused by the affordable housing crisis today. Today in America, the majority of poor renting families receive no help from the government and are spending at least half of what they have on housing costs, one in four of those families spend over 70% of their income just on rent and utilities. The high cost of housing is crushing families of modest means, putting them in really incredibly difficult decisions and making eviction commonplace. Milwaukee, where this book is set, sees 40 court-ordered evictions today. New York, where you are, sees 60 martial evictions every single day. And the face of this epidemic is mothers with children now, until recently, housing court in the South Bronx, not too far from here, had a daycare inside of it because there were so many moms and kids coming through its doors. Eviction, which used to be rare in this country, which used to draw crowds, is not just a condition of poverty, it's a cause of it. It's making things worse, and it's leaving a deep and jagged scar on the next generation, which means we can't fix poverty in this country without fixing housing. There are a million questions that remain unanswered, a million stories that remain untold about this issue. So a plea to all you movers and shakers in the room, a plea to you journalists and editors and philanthropists and organizers, let's keep the heat on this issue. Let's keep this at the top of the national agenda. Let's make these systems visible. Let's amplify the voices of the evicted. Let's tell the stories of kids that aren't getting enough to eat because the rent eats first. Make room, I please, in your papers, in your portfolios, in your magazines for these stories. Because whatever your passion, whatever your issue is, whether it's racial inequality, education, community vitality, health, whatever it is, the lack of stable affordable housing is at the root of that issue. Without stable shelter, everything else falls apart. Thank you. Thank you.